Good morning. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, and welcome to ONN. I'm James. And I'm Harper, and here today's top headlines. Today is February 2nd, Groundhog Day, and we're all here to tell you about Punks of Twanies, Phil, if he saw his shadow today. And now to Vera with today's lunch menu. Hello, this is Vera with the lunch, and for today's lunch, we have a Charleston chicken sandwich with Doritos and steamed corn, or a PB&J protein kit. Grab your fresh fruit, veggies, and milk. Thank you. Back to Harper. Thank you. February 2nd is Groundhog Day. Predictions are made about the upcoming weather on this day. Will there be more winter or is spring on its way? There's a famous groundhog who plays a role in the day. His name is Punxsutawney Phil. A groundhog is a large rodent rodent with a bushy tail. It burrows underground and sleeps through the winter. Phil lives in Pennsylvania. This is a state in the northeastern United States. He has been practicing the weather since the 1880s. Today, Phil is an animal celebrity. He's the nation's most famous groundhog. On February 2nd, thousands of people wait for Phil to appear at Gobbler's Knob. That's where he lives. It's a rural area about two miles away from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Phil doesn't live underground now. He lives in a burrow. It's built by humans. Most day, he sleeps, eats, and poses for pictures. He met a former president. president. He made him even more pop- who made him even more popular. In 2001, Phil's weather prediction was shown on a big screen in Times Square in New York City. First, Phil makes his appearance on Groundhog Day. Then, he speaks in Groundhoggies, The language is only understood by the president of Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. The president translates what Phil is saying about the weather. Then the prediction is broadcasted all around the world. Phil has been predicting weather for more than a hundred years. The Groundhog Club members say he's never wrong, but he is right less than half the time. His success as a weatherman is limited, so people eagerly wait for his forecast every year. And we have this year's weather prediction ready for you. Pennsylvania's most famous groundhog emerged from his burrow this cold Thursday morning and saw a shadow, declaring there'd be there'd be six more weeks of winter. Punxsutawney Phil made his prediction as a very serious storm wreaked havoc in the south and the northeast. Was bracing for a dangerous Arctic blast. Records kept by the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club show Phil has predicted 105 continued winters and only 20 early springs, and 10 years of records were lost over the years. The Groundhog Club members say he's never wrong, but he has right less half. But he has right been right less than half of the time. His successful. His successful uh, career as a weatherman is limited. According to the Storm Facts Almanac, that works out to a 39% accuracy rate for Phil. That means he's right about two times out of every five. Six more weeks of winter for us might mean more storms, rain, or chilly winters weather. But don't let the winter blues get you down. Summer will be here before you know it. Because today is the 100th day of school, which means we are more than halfway done with our school year. Time sure has flown by. The 100th day of school is widely celebrated in preschools, kindergartens, and elementary schools as a fun milestone to break up the school year. Special lessons and activities are prepared to celebrate the day, and lots of people are wearing costumes today to make them look like they are 100 years old. See how many ways you can count to 100 today. And now to Cameron with today's weather.
Thank you, James. Today is February 2nd, 2023. The high will be 63 and the low will be 49. Now it's time for a special segment. Up next on ONN. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So today I am a little under the weather. I may sound crazy, but I had to come in because it's the first piece of information for Black History Month of the day. I had to be here so that I could give it to you. And I am telling you about my favorite, absolute favorite. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. We are talking about Henry Box Brown today. Who was he? Henry Box Brown was a 19th century Virginia slave who escaped to freedom at age 33 by arranging to have himself mailed in a wooden crate in 1849 to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania abolitionist. With the help of James C. A. Smith, a free black man and a caring white shoemaker named Samuel A. Smith, Brown came up with a plan to have himself shipped to a free state by Adams Express Company known for its confidentiality and efficiency. Brown paid $86 out of his savings of only $166 to Samuel Smith. Samuel Smith then went to Philadelphia to talk to members of the Pennsylvania Anti-Slavery Society on how to get away with the escape. They advised him on how and where the package should be mailed to. On the day that Brown escaped, he burned his hand to the bone just to get out of work. He was boxed up with only a small portion of water and a few biscuits. There was a single hole cut out for air so that he could breathe. And then finally, after 27 hours, just over a day, Henry Box Brown was delivered safely to freedom. Isn't that something? I just love this story, y'all. All right, so listen up because this is important. This question is for only K through two. All right, so K through two students. If you listen correctly, hopefully you'll get it right. True or false, Henry Box Brown escaped to freedom using the Underground Railroad. For grades K through two, true or false, Henry Box Brown escaped to freedom using the Underground Railroad. Make sure you put your answers in today, K through two, and put them in the box, in the basket located right outside the library door today. And then for grades three through five, what state was Brown shipped to? Was it A, Pennsylvania, B, South Carolina, or C, New York? Again, for grades three through five, was it A, Pennsylvania, B, South Carolina, or C, New York? I hope you guys are paying attention. Put your answers in the box and we will pick our first winners tomorrow morning. See you then. Today we're giving away Beanstack prizes. Our first prize is our random drawing of people who completed the symbols, secret codes, and emojis challenge. Those winners are Silas Baker, Natalie Grenda, Charlie O'Coin, Brendan Phelps, and ONN's own Cameron Molina. Our next prize is our random drawing of people who completed the All the Feels Challenge on Beanstack. Those winners are Henry Deering, Cole Shepard, James Brownlee, Jaden Nguyen, Brian Lanier, Caleb Rhodes, Brooklyn Lynch, Bevan Beckenall, Sophie Z. Dillon, and our very own Vera Jarrett. And finally, first in second grade have been working hard to log their minutes on Beanstack, so we're going to reward our top readers in each grade. For first grade, our top readers were Chase Benton in first place, Henry Deering in second place, and Egypt Gadsden in third place. For second grade, Dexter Frederick in first place, Eleanor Bryant in second place, and Benson Liu in third place. Come to the library to pick up your prize.
I'm Bella, and please stand for today's Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Please remain standing for the moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, let's get today's birthdays. There's no kid birthdays today, but there are some staff members' birthdays for February. Mrs. Maxwell's birthday is today, February 2nd. Mrs. Rodriguez, Mr. Rodriguez's birthday on February 13th, and Miss Goodson on the 14th. Mrs. Harker on the 15th, Mrs. Ford on the 16th, and Mrs. Vickers on the 20th, and Mr. Johnson's on the 25th. Happy birthday! This Friday is an early release day. And with that, I'm James for Onan. Have a wonderful day. I'm Harper for Onan. Have a wonderful day.